heard me speak of presence. Stay in the presence, in the sense I am. You have heard, no? Stay in the I amness. What is the difference, if there is one, between the I amness presence, which is sometimes referred to as conscious presence, or the I am, or the I sense, like this, and awareness? Well, because we are not talking about things, like the difference between these two things, which we can say, this is the quality of that, as distinct from this, it is not an object, it is very, very much to do with the subject and subtlety of this uh, subject, um, what we call the pure subject. What I will give another example. I hope you can, well, you, of course, you can follow what I am speaking. Um, in Sanskrit terminology, in in Hindi, in Hindu, uh, <clears throat> there is an expression. We say Brahman. Brahman means consciousness, highest consciousness. No? You may hear of Para Brahman or Param Atman. This kind of term, Para means the highest. No? So Brahman means the pure awareness, pure awareness. Okay. There is a term which is referred to as a nirguna, nirguna Brahman. It means the Brahman attributeless, beyond quality. Hmm? It cannot be described. It is the essence, pure. It is beyond any categorization at all. Hmm? It has no religion. It is beyond any any image of God. It is pure awareness. That is the absolute truth. Pure, pure awareness. Awareness is not an object. When we do the invitation, or several times we have looked together, and I say, don't touch anything of form, or name, or feeling, all these things through the invitation, what is it doing? It is allowing you to come to your natural formless. Ness, to the formlessness. Okay, you experience this or not? Yes, because normally in our life we are associated with so many things, with name and position and role. Some people have very strong identity with personhood, or with being a mother, or with being a, you know a doctor, or being a somebody. Yes, but for this highest understanding. You have to leave all these roles aside because all of them are a limitation. Whatever you define, you confine. Do you understand like this? So therefore you are asked, don't hold on to any shape. Don't let any concept be so valuable for you. No concept be so valuable for you. Have no favorite concepts. Who can bear it? When you are told like that, some people immediately find that whatever they have been living, holding on to, comes up very strong, and then fear comes, like, oh, I am not ready to separate from this thing. So at least you are aware of what concept is binding you, I would say that, meaning, like, without that, that concept holds you into a shape. You are holding on to a shape, and the shape is holding on to you. When someone gives birth, a woman gives birth uh, to a child, before this woman is, is, is not a mother. She gives birth to a child, eh? now she has a child, and I say the child gives birth to her. She gives birth to a child, eh? now I have baby, and the child has given birth to her, and she become a mother. Before not a mother. And then this uh, relationship can grow very, very strong in the mind. From now on, the life has changed. I'm just like this, very, very strong. If the identity is very strong, it would be like that. And we don't have to just stop at mother. Any role you play, you're a doctor. 
And you never can forget you are a doctor. Whatever happens, you are a doctor. You see, you are doctor so and so, not even Mister anymore. Yeah? So uh, these things they happen in life, of course, and they have a role to play. But for some people, it's like they all the life become that. And I said, no, you can live life fully with that understanding, that role being played, but you are not defined in your heart by that role. You see, one time I had to say to one of my friends, you know, you have to transcend your Japanese conditioning for what we are doing. I don't go around telling people, you know, you have to stop being. I didn't say stop. I say you have to transcend. Japanese the conditioning, not because you go, <laughs> not that. I'm saying that the a kind of mentality that is so strong that you cannot let go of it. Then watch that, because just to recognize where I am, you cannot take that in with you, because this thing you take in with you will pull you out. It will keep you in shape. You understand? So it's not just an exchange. Yes, it oft after in your dynamic life that is fine, but if you want to come to ultimate understanding, you must not hold on or associate with anything. Is it asking too much? I'm not telling you stop being a doctor and all. No, no, no. That you do now as you are looking here. Undress yourself of everything, you see, and be here. Then you find. The unmixed, the unassociated consciousness. So, very important. I speak now of Nirguna consciousness, the Nirguna Brahman, which means absolute emptiness. Not someone being Nirguna. There is no someone being anything. The very beingness is Nirguna. Even the awareness of being also happens to in the Nirguna state. So I speak of Nirguna Brahman. Now I speak another term called Saguna Brahman. Hmm? Again, Brahman, awareness, but now with quality. What quality? Of love, compassion, of beauty, of trust, of faith. You see, like this. So, uh, for most people, uh, they are attracted to us to Saguna Brahman. Here, you can have relationship. You have a relationship uh, with uh, heavenly beings, with God, with Christ. With you know, it's very much heart and emotion, feeling. All this is also mm, here, and can be pure. But we have a tendency. To associate, yes, we have an idea of what God is. We have an idea, and we see that in different places, God have a different kind of quality for some people. And some people, even in this state, they will talk about, you know, well, my God and your God, my Guru, your Guru. And so there are differences there. No, it's fine. Consciousness is playing. In the realm of diversity, still, and it brings you to the highest. Hmm. Highest means when you are surrendered to the Supreme, and you feel a oneness, a unity with the Supreme. Like this, you worship God. Your life becomes beautiful. You become more kind, more open, more sensitive, more truthful in your way. Huh? More silent. But uh, still, some subtle identity can be there. Then, at best, that identity is becoming spiritualized. Uh, I cannot define the Saguna Brahman in its entirety, which I give you a sense. Now, it say <coughs> that the pure consciousness, the pure awareness itself, uh, exists. Mm. But uh, a movement, and it forms. It comes into the vibration of a conscious presence, 
it manifests and it the earliest expression arising from this brahman you see is this principle of presence which means the fi- the feeling i am and that i am it needs it needs a body it needs a body to to experience the the vibration of being that is the earliest and purest expression in the space of attributeness the feeling i exist and uh, this actually is called presence where you are aware when i say if you had an operation and you're coming back in out of the operation coming back to consciousness but supposing your senses had not kicked in and so you can't see anything and even hand or nothing you cannot feel there's none of the senses are here reporting anything at all the mind is not really creating anything you would still be aware that you exist the feeling i am would be there still and not associated with any function yet just the intuitive sense or knowingness i i am it may not have much information maybe memory has not kicked in yet maybe references have not kicked in yet but you are aware you are alive you see so even there it is there it is the first born of all knowingness the knowledge i am i exist it exists before the feeling of you because the sense of you is only in relation to i i is the first principle the first knowing the beginning of language of perception of i and other i based upon this form other means other forms and you start to see how consciousness begins to diversify in each form there is the vibration i i is actually your true name i am everyone feels i am even this fly mosquito it is aware of itself it knows it exists this i amness is the godly presence and principle inside the body that functions through perceiving hmm, through discerning through sensing developing wisdom through memory all of these things come to life when the i amness itself gets identified with the body which is the instrument through which it can taste experiencing a tendency to identify i am the body comes alive then come the environmental conditioning of what comes from your family what come from your neighborhood what come from school what come from society what comes from everywhere puts start to build on that basic assumption i am this body and from that arises a sense of personhood is it too complex what i'm speaking okay so then comes the person the person is a derivative it he comes out of the i consciousness but it is less because the i person is very much an environmental being is very much identified with his own community own style of thing it's still unique because you cannot replicate the person it's still very unique but it is very personalized it perceives the world very personally what it likes what it feels threatened by what is attracted to all of this form the person so the person is also consciousness but is reduced consciousness it has very very strong sense of quality i am white i'm black i'm english i am you know whatever and it holds these qualities as representing what it is but uh, it overlooks its fundamental uh, origin and nature and so the soup thickens you can go into life more and more people i don't like you no you don't blah, 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 blah. and all of these conflicts they begin to race up inside attraction repulsion all of this you me this that heaven hell you know, angels demons you know all these things come into play 
And it is as though the beingness which first appear in the pure form I am has become now addicted to experiencing. And yet it cannot control its projections like that. Is it worth me talk like this? Yes. Okay. So as it comes like this now, it becomes it's first attracted to and feels a kind of um, either a love for or a hate against this body itself it can also have. Not all the beings they love their own body, even sometimes they don't like. Also to do with culture, cultural thinking also is steering. And so you see that the, our judgments are not true, they are distortions of consciousness. When we have come to the place now is something is able to investigate, to look, to inquire into, to see the difference between that the body and the activities can be noticed and observed and seen as a kind of play, in much the same way that you watch something on TV, you're watching a movie, and uh, you will cry and laugh and uh, and uh, and uh, be afraid and stuff, all the while knowing that it is a movie, even though emotions are stirred and you cry and you laugh and you you oh, and all these reactions are come. Still, the deeper thing is that I'm watching movie. Some people they identify so much that they forget they're watching movie. We remember also in the UK one in one soap opera that was going on for quite a long time. Now the actor, out of role, himself, in supermarket, and he's playing. You know, like uh, at this time on in in one of his roles, he's playing like he's a, a bit of a bad husband. No? And some woman walked up to him, you know, and whacked him. And says, "You're a very bad husband. You're a very bad person." He goes, whoa, 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 hey, hey. It's a play, woman. You know, I don't care. You're not a nice person. So you see that people sometimes are deeply involved in the. They don't know the difference between actuality, no, and imagination. They get so sucked in. So there are people also. So you're watching movie. And you can see, yes, okay, you're entertained by it, but there's a detachment. You know, after this huge impact of the movie, you come in after you go out and you have something to eat and everything, and you say, oh, it was a nice movie. You finish it there. You don't carry it to bed, have nightmares about it, and this kind of stuff, writing blogs about it. No? So there is a distinction where you say, yeah, okay, I know it's a movie. I put it that this life is also a movie, but on a three-dimensional screen. When you go watch movies, a two-dimensional screen, you can look, everything is on the screen. You see? But now you are in your own movie, moving, and yet you are capable of being aware from a place of stillness and silence. You can watch this movie also. Is true or not? Because for many people, this feels like no, that's not possible. There is just life. There is no watching of life. You know, what I mean, there there is no space to watch it. I am it. This is the difference now, is that you are able also to feel your dynamic existence in the movie of life. At the same time, a capacity is there. Right here, also, to be aware that it is watchable. If you don't know this, you take everything very seriously. You will do many things that are. You say, well, why would you do that? I mean, like it's only a play in your mind. And people think, what are you talking about? Like you know, what I believe and what I see is universal. I say, no, it is not. If you go to bed in the night and you have a uh, you, you are sleeping with your partner, and you have a dream. You cannot 
plug in your partner into the dream and say, darling, darling, come, 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 put this, put this on, put this on. Look, 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 this is what's happening to me right now. And she's going, oh, oh, you know, it cannot happen. Your dream experience is a unique experience. Would you not say? You cannot just, you can tell people about it, but they can't experience it like you. Now, I'm going to tell you, your waking state is just as unique. Your way of perceiving life, even in the waking state, you cannot share with anyone. Your way of perceiving things is a unique movie in you, and yet nobody talks about it. We all, because we have like a, some common shared characteristics, maybe cultural, that we can look at the same thing, get a certain vibe, but the unique way in which you experience it hmm, is taken to be, we sometimes assume that's what everybody sees, what you see. Even on a screen watching something, you may feel that, ah, you remember this part when it's in, somebody may not even notice that part. It's not for them. You see, I'm only putting it that the experiencing of life is a subjective matter. There is nothing in the universe of names and forms which has a fixed meaning, which means that if this, is, if this flower means something, no, then that, and that's the truth, it means that everyone will experience it the same way. But you see that some people will like it, and some people will hate it, and some people will not even want, will want to destroy the whole species of them. Another one is farming them. This shows the various ways in which the consciousness functions in the play of individuality, isn't it? Now you begin to see some of that, then you don't take it in so deeply. When you begin to observe this quality of being stuck into a fixed idea of what things are, something relaxes and sees that it's, it's optional. It's optional. You become aware of the very root of perceiving. You may even come to recognise that there is the perceiving of the functioning of perception even. Have I gone too far? That just somehow, even the act of perceiving, there is awareness of it. Now, let's make that this very moment. I know I have a sense I'm sitting here with this paper in my hand, but this also is a shape taking place in my shapelessness. I am simply aware. My awareness does not have this impression stamped on it. Any amount of impressions can come. Even now, better, because I am not, none of them is sticking. If they are sticking, I might have to have some to wait. Wait, 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 wait. My screen is full. My screen is never full. Like a mirror that reflects whatever is in front of it, and never complains. I'm too busy reflecting right now. Could you come back later? No, it is not doing anything. The mirror is not doing anything. It's not even reflecting. Reflecting happens there. I'm just giving little hints, a little bit of the magnificence of consciousness. How it is functioning without you trying to, you know, you didn't have to crank up the consciousness in the morning. It, everything is functioning. All the senses are functioning. Everything is functioning just in their own, according to their own law. And who are you in all of this? Uh, witnessing this. Hmm? The witnessing of the life has a certain taste. If the witness of life is the person, and then uh, every day you ask the person about life, either they are stuck in a view, 
or they can't they keep changing their view that is obviously but the one who is watching from pure awareness itself they have the ability to look and to discriminate between things but not passionately they see that there are many options and ways of looking their views have become universalized they are looking with the consciousness i am with the conscious presence it perceives it is said it is for the conscious presence that the universe was made that it can perceive and believe interact understand compare negotiate discriminate like this in the state of conscious presence when conscious presence is freed from the the tightness of personal presence then it is witnessing its world becomes very beautiful satchidananda it knows it is existing it knows it is not an object it knows also it is imperishable it knows that it has an intuition i call it the child of the absolute is the way in which the absolute can taste experiencing and the purest experiencer is the one called the i am that vibration that you are it is like some invisible umbilical cord links that to the absolute it's not true not a true picture but for us to understand because the absolute is no distance from the i amness you understand this so it's not that there's some tube linking there's no there's no distance it's almost like russian dolls folding out of each other but it's still just one like i have this fun now is a fan it is one unit if i do this it's still one unit if this was the absolute if this was the nirguna brahman it's never go- i can't give you a perfect illustration if this is the totality of the fan if i do that then we come into saguna brahman the expression and we can have it like this all this play okay <laughs> If I put, if I did like this, say that is the saguna aspect of the absolute, then I extend a bit further, it becomes person. It's still all one together, like that. I want to put. You see, of course, it is not a good example. It's just, it's okay. Or you can have an aerial of a car. It is one unit. Then say that is the totality. Then you pull it up. extend first extension and the feeling i am comes okay and then you pull it a bit more and the i am and antenna ta 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 and qualities and all these kind of things come it's a little bit like that but it's not it it's not it it's just a sort of something because we are used to trying to understand things with our mind uh, no one can understand nirguna brahman you can only be that not as an action taken you cannot say this morning i'm you know, i'm tired of saguna brahman i want to be nirguna brahman just give me my... right, very good i'm not going no it's not something like that it is what is there when the mind is more most subtle when the sense of presence itself becomes observable automatically it is being somehow Uh, known that it is being experienced in the um, in the unformed in the absolute awareness so back to this let us know this is why i say it's very important point to ask i'm not going to take questions for a moment i want to listen to this one i continue so uh, uh, rodney from scotland is already said no uh, Uh, I feel an urgency to stabilize the experience of being in my true self while I can as I am 73 years old I have had four small heart attacks in the last four years as well as a cardiac arrest the latter was in fact a beautiful gift as it has allayed put aside my fear of dying I remember being in the hospital theater and feeling extremely anxious about a procedure that was just starting when i was suddenly moving at warp speed through what seemed like an organic tunnel 
So obviously a very warm experience is happening here. I felt blissful and was thoroughly enjoying the experience when I was abruptly brought back into the room. There was a feeling of disappointment that I was not able to continue my journey. Okay? So obviously it's giving you a near death experience. I was on my way. It felt beautiful. You see? It felt beautiful. And then somehow I was jerked back into my body. I looked around. Okay, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want to ask, though, is to do with being in awareness or presence. You understand why I took the time to, to talk about this? I have up till now been more inclined to put my attention on presence, as that seemed to give a feeling of warmth and love, and seems familiar, but is not consistent in my experience, whilst putting attention on awareness is easier, although it feels a little cooler. Can you relate? Yeah. When I'm in the, uh, the Saguna Brahman, when I'm in the sense of conscious presence, I can still feel the warmth and feel the love is coming. And it's so very beautiful, very enjoyable. Yes. And I'm going to be, you may, some people may go, depending upon the maturity of their perceiving and their self awareness, might go and be with their relatives and that have passed on and you know, meet meet angelic beings and been very beautiful experience for some time. Uh, another one uh, maybe come into higher presence of beings who are higher because they are beings who are in a higher state of consciousness. And then um, uh, present that seems to give a feeling of warmth and love, and seems familiar, but is not consistent in my experience. Whilst putting attention on awareness is easier, though it feels a little cooler when I'm in the place of nyaguna, hmm. attributeless, normally not easily attracted to human consciousness, because we like quality. We like quality. You want to have a nice feeling, and oh, nice to have this emotions, and so on. It is beautiful also. It is quality. Huh? No, he said, but it feels much easier to rest in this uh, nirguna, pure awareness itself, which is beyond quality. It does not necessarily manifest the same kind of warmth, listen, the warmth of saguna, of conscious presence. We like warmth. We love nice embrace. Happy. And the aguna is pure. You see, pure. Hmm? It also allows the emanation of love because it's not separate from Saguna Brahman. Hmm? Saguna Brahman is its flavor, if you want to say flavor, but it is beyond everything. I am Nyaguna Brahman. I am Saguna Brahman. My Saguna uh, allows me to enjoy you. To be in the company of those who love God. To feel the richness of the poetry of Rumi and Kabir and Afiz. What's in it for me? It's beyond me. It's beyond I, even. It's 
even beyond maybe attraction. I don't know if I can use this word. Because uh, here I cannot perceive uh, Nirguna without Saguna, because of my half a body. Mm. I still have the play of the senses, I have the sense of presence. It's all mixed, and yet it's also uh, a distinction here. So what uh, Rodney is saying is that it feels uh, there's no variable in Nirguna. I cannot describe the perfectness. It's not a mental perfectness. Mm. It is the bliss of bliss itself. It is the bliss that gives bliss its bliss. It cannot be owned. It cannot belong. And you have also been introduced. But our saguna attachments also, we bring in also. And so, because we still want uh, something, we still want uh, the taste. When I say we love the, to taste the honey, but you don't want to be the honey, I said here you are tasting the honey, and you are also the honey. But I don't know if you grasp. We are running out of words. Though speaking, when I speak of nirguna. It is wordless. There are no words. There are no concepts. It is really what you are. But from Nyaguna, you can flow in the world of Saguna also. While still Nyaguna, just like now, we have body, very much earth body we have here. But uh, you can experience your Saguna nature, you can become aware of Nyaguna, even with this body, is not obstructing. The body is not by itself the obstruction. The strongest obstruction is the belief I am the doer of my life, I am the thinker of my thoughts and the doer of my action. The autonomy of personhood, that is much more a heavier state than even the feeling, I am the body. And so, I just this last one. I have up until now been more inclined to put my attention on presence, as that seems to give a feeling of warmth and love and seems familiar, but is not consistent in my experience, whilst putting attention on awareness, is easier, although it feels a little cooler. You understand? It's beautifully expressed. Hmm? We want the warmth. If you want warmth in your inner state of personhood, it will only be momentary warmth. You experience a loving touch, a beautiful letter, a, a lovely meeting, you feel the warmth, and you keep it only through memory. But when you feel the warmth of presence, it is more like it is with you. If you take a piece of metal, and you put it in the fire for half an hour. You can take this metal and you can touch things and set them on fire. <laughs> touch there, I did. Yeah, it has become like fire. But if you leave it for a little while, or you let water touch it, then it loses its power. It cools down and goes back to room temperature again. But if you are plugged into the powerhouse, 
so you're not just on charge, then it cannot fade. It means you are one. You are one with the, the truth of yourself. It's not fading. It's not the, because your joy is not circumstantial. It's not, oh, I went out today and I met a very nice person, and oh, it's so wonderful. It's not that joy. That joy will fade. But the joy, which is the joy arising out of your own being, the joy of yourself, and that need not fail. Even though moments of sorrow may come, the joy will not move out of the way for the sorrow. You follow like this? I am very happy that we are talking like this today. It does, however, have qualities of stillness, meaning the nirgun, and the attributeless at the same time. It does, however, have qualities of stillness and peace, and does enable the seeing of what is happening more objectively. What do you mean more objectively? More detachment. You follow a lot I'm speaking? So there's perceiving. There's perceiving because um, it's not that in the realization of one's nirguna state that saguna goes okay bye I'm out of here no that is also whatever you have transcended is still accessible for you so he's saying that I can still perceive no uh, it however have uh, qualities of stillness and peace the stillness and peace this is the perfume. The stillness and peace is here also, and does enable the seeing of what is happening to be more objectively perceived. I mean that you're seeing, but now without the reactions of the temperamental and emotional being, not the ah, ah the, the judgments. No, there's a seeing of that. If you should uh, say, suppose there was a catastrophic. A catastrophic occurrence where a train has capsized over and many people die, and if you had the eyes to see angelic beings arriving on the scene, they are not going ah, oh, but their presence already is already got things. They will do their work, but they are not passionate. But there's love and tremendous peace and grace. I am now wondering if the feeling of presence is more mind generated or perhaps mixed. Mm, it is not just mind generated, it's a mix of uh, uh, saguna quality and nirguna essence. So guna quality, nirguna essence, you see. Mm. So it is there also. Remember when I said relatively to what is happening in our waking state, life and environment, the weakness mm, is still in relation to all the activity of the senses and the mind, the weakness of them is uh, Still, when the time come, deep sleep come, the weakness is not needed anymore. The shop closed. The functioning of uh, the cognitive functioning uh, goes into rest. It will sprout again after deep sleep has had its time. You see, so let him go. Relative to the activities of the body mind functioning in the waking state, the weakness is like the deity of the waking state. But it itself rotates in that cosmic expression of life, waking, dreaming. Sleeping, awareness, consciousness. (coughs) 
there is no alteration in Nirguna. Yet you say you are not aware. Not being aware of what is, is not a flaw in it. You understand? <clears throat> so I would really appreciate your help on this, love, Rodney. I feel this is a beautiful letter for reading today. What I read and what I share with you is to go through mind bypass, straight into the heart. And so, like this, you will find that if you accept somehow, if it resonates with you, you welcome, please, universe, higher consciousness, Lord of the universe, please instill here, or better still, merge my sense of separateness into the unity of His. Then from time to time, waves of illumination will come in you. You will understand what you need to understand, in accordance with your capacity to understand. That is the power of God. It will feed you what you can eat. If you retain sense of personhood, you take it on, and this is not going to work so well, because the person already is in its own way. Mm. Yeah. In the presence of the absolute. I cannot make any claims about things, say, oh no, no, no. Just a kind of taste. Like looking in the mirror and appreciating, you know, your face today. But the mirror hasn't given you your face. It is only reflecting. Where is this silence coming from? Is this silence the product of Saguna or Nirguna? Has it come, or is it revealed? This is what we are missing out of, by choosing, or by not um, being aware of our true nature. The mind cannot give you this. You are experiencing yourself. You are the honey you are tasting. Your words will fail you to try and convey this. Only your mind will try to convey with words. But this is your perfume.
I wonder if it is too premature to ask you if this can fade. And yet, somehow, uh, the mind, in the aspect of memory and identity, will flow up. You see, can it erase this? Can it conceal? Important. Can it conceal this? Because we will experience as though this has been hidden. But it can only be hidden if you are pulled back into duality of personhood, and then the self will seem like it is somewhere else, and then the mind will see me come between. This is an illusion. Just like the sun does not know shadow. The sun does not know. This cloud is blocking my light. Then may your pure consciousness be your reference and not your person. Do you understand? Like a reflex, we keep going back to personhood. Keep going to personhood. But now, I pray and bless that your reflex will be pure awareness. Who or what am I addressing you as? You will be what in my eyes and heart? Person, or presence, or pure awareness? With whatever eyes I perceive you, may it be you perceive. That you came, you came here, hmm? here, and here. Here, most here you will leave. 